That's the mom. That's Kevin. And we're implicitly biased. So we're gonna do a top five list again. Are you ready? Totally. Yeah? All right, so this top five list is gonna be uh, famous people that we'd like to meet. Okay. So fa five famous people that you'd like to meet that are alive. Alive, okay. And then we'll do five, pa five famous people that we'd like to meet who are dead. Yes, who are dead currently. Okay, and then significant events. Five significant events that either you would like to be, have liked to have been a part of mm -hmm. or like to have witnessed. Okay. And I think this will kind of highlight our implicit bias. This will kind of highlight the differences that, about things that we see as important as you being a very attractive middle-aged white man, me being an extremely attractive, physically fit, middle-aged black man, you know, I just, uh, <laughs> I, what? What are you trying to say, Kevin? What are we doing first? I'm speaking those things that are not as though they were. Do you ever even read the Bible? Jesus, HDP in Christ. All right, here we go. So, we'll start from five, and then we'll go to one. Okay. So, we'll start from your least-ish person to your <clears throat> most-ish person. Okay. All right? And because the way of the world is... You can go first. <laughs> we're doing all of them at once? Or we're going no, you just do one and we'll discuss it. Then I'll do one and we'll discuss it. And then we'll go back and forth. I'd really like to meet George Lucas. Oh, the uh, Star Wars dude. Star Wars guy. Among other things, but yeah. No, he's just a Star Wars dude. No, before the Star Wars, he was the uh, American graffiti guy. Yeah, but he's still just a star. I mean, I actually really love Maverick. You know, he did the, the movie Maverick with Mel Gibson. Yeah. And so there's actually other stuff that I like that he did, but he's he's, he's a Star just, Wars. Well, not anymore. He sold it, too. But he's still... It, I, every time there's a Star Wars movie, it says Lucas before the Star Wars movie. Okay, you're right. But why? Because of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, because of Star Wars. But what? I mean, what about it? Do you want to, like, pick his the, brain, or do you just... This is just meeting. I just want to meet him. Say, thanks for making Star Wars. That'd be enough for me. I'm not trying to, like, take a dump on your dream or anything like that, but that's not kind of shout. Like, you just want to be like, hey, like, this. you want to be the fan, guys. Like, I just wanted to touch your hand. Absolutely. The hand of the man who thought up Obi-Wan Kenobi. Again. Or Jar Jar Binks, you know? Oh, God. Yeah, right. <laughs> Misa thinks he's great. Oh, my God. You's a dummy. <laughs> So that's it. Just because he made... Yeah. Oh. My, my list was very simple. Very shallow. Yeah. But, I mean, in a good way. Anyways. So, all right. My uh, my number five, then that's the living people, right? Yeah. My number five is Professor Cornell West. Professor Dr. Cornell West. He is like the... Uh, <clears throat> at a, I can't remember the school he teaches at now. It slipped my mind. But he's like a... A philosopher, a historian, a, uh, a a thinker. He's a black man who's just overwhelmingly intelligent. He has changed the thinking of so many African American people in this country. Uh, he's always on forums. He's always talking. He's always spouting wisdom, and he's giving different perspectives and different philosophy on the black condition in America. And I would just love to not just meet him and just sit, you know, like, but I'd like to like actually sit down and pick his brain and talk to him and, and get some understanding about his perspective of the, the state of the, the United States or the state of the world. And he's just a, a brilliant, a brilliant man. And I just would, uh, I'd love to sit in his presence and talk to him for a while. Cause then, you know, iron sharpened with iron, you know, I'm brilliant and you know, he's brilliant and maybe they'll just go ahead and give me my doctorate degree like they're supposed to, you know, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it could happen. Fathomable. If he if he sponsors me, it's like a shoe in. Perfect. I'll be right up in there. All right, but that's my number five. Number four for me would be all of the Top Gear dudes at once. Oh, <laughs> oh like, man, that's actually. I, I don't want to just meet one of them. I want to meet all three of them. I want to drive wait, wait, with wait, all wait. of them. Oh, all three. Okay, so all you're three. not talking about American no. Top Gear. Like you're talking about the real Top the Gear. The real. Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Captain Slow. Yeah. Those dudes, top-notch fellas. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's actually a fantastic list. Yeah. But those are number four. 
Because you know they you you know how much fun you'd have. I mean, well, you mean just like talk to them or like spend the afternoon? No, with I them? want to drive with them. I want to talk with them. Yeah. I want to see their favorite cars. You know, all that fun yeah. stuff. Like go to their house and actually drive their cars yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, I can see that being real fun, real entertaining. See, that was less George Lucas Lucas ish. George Lucas ish. That was low because that George Lucas thing. I, I'm actually ashamed for you. Yeah. He's just gonna go shake his hand. At least be like, "Hey, what's next for you know? Uh, you know, even though you're not really in it, you know, what do you think is gonna be next? Where did Yoda come from?" Well, the Disney crapped all over his original intention anyway. So, well, the, not so that what? that I have a problem with it because I love all the Disney stuff too. But he's done with it, and he kind of wants to write it off. It seems. Uh, you get that? How I many was it? Two billion dollars he bought? They, they, yeah. Well, you get that kind of money, you probably wouldn't care all that much either. But you still could ask him, like, where's Yoda from, and where's, you know... Yeah. Ah, I God, like the history of it. You're a terrible fan. But, yeah, Top Gear, guys, that's pretty dope. I'd get down with that. All right, my number four. You ready for this? Shoot. I want to meet Mufasa himself. James Earl Jones? No, Mufasa. Don't mess up his name. I don't care what the government calls him. He's Mufasa. He's Darth Vader. Mufasa is his first name. Darth Vader is his <laughs> middle and last name. <laughs> no, yeah, James Earl Jones, man. Uh, I, it is kind of one of those fanboy things, but, I mean, this dude, literally from that point when he was Mufasa, I've always been, like, intrigued. I mean, that voice, that that presence that he has. And then, then he's the Bible guy, you know what I mean? Like, you listen to the Bible, he's the guy on the Bible. He's, for you know, the voice of God in some cases. <laughs> and then... Uh, then there's other movies that he's done that I watched, you know, from the 70s and stuff like that that I, I later on watched. And he's a good actor. And then, like you said, of course, he's the, he's Darth Vader. And he came back to be Darth Vader. And he came back to be Mufasa. And, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't, just to hear his story and talk to him. It's not like, I don't think he's so much of a, um, a philosopher or anything, which he might be. I'm not sure. But just, I don't know. It's just kind of one of those people. watch? I forgot what it's called. The River Niger? No. The baseball one. He was kind of a philosopher in that one. The baseball one? Yeah, if you build it, they will come. Oh, Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Yeah, but that's a, a part that he was playing. There was there was one called The River Niger where he literally was a philosopher poet. It was back... Did uh, you see Sandlot? He was a philosopher Oh, in my that. God. Sandlot? That's what you know him from? I know him from everything. Uh, you don't... Well, except you, the River Niger. I was going to say you've never heard of The River Niger. I used to use it to say another word at the end of that when I was a kid. But I, I saw now since. Use? Oh, well, you know, Nigeria or something oh, okay, like okay. that. Yeah, how I dare understand. you think I would say anything else? Anyways, but no, yeah, I want to meet Mufasa. That's, that's my number four. Uh, my number three would be Wolverine himself. Hugh Blackman? Hugh Jackman. Oh, Jackman. I'm sorry, I thought he was Blackman. Hugh Jackman. Why is that? Because he's another fantastic actor, but he's. Uh, not just an action actor. He's a fantastic singing actor. Awesome in, in the singing movies yes. that I've seen him in. Musicals. Les, Les Miserables or whatever it's called. Les well, that or, or all the way back to Oklahoma, which was a play that was recorded. Did you um, see him in Phantom of the Opera? I, I liked Phantom of the Opera and this, this um, the circus movies. Um, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The Greatest was, Showman. Yeah. That was pretty fantastic. Yeah, it was. It was no. I actually, I haven't actually watched Les Les Miserables, The Miserables, or Les whatever. Mis Les, Les Miserables. Yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah, I haven't actually watched that one, but I used to literally watch Phantom of the Opera every night before I went to bed because mm -hmm. it would just play on the loop. So in my dreams, I would hear him singing, <laughs> you know, the, the Phantom of the Opera thing, and uh, and I actually loved that movie. It was uh, fantastic, and he his voice. I but mean, he he played the my favorite comic book character. I mean, Hollywood ruined it, but he he turned it into something completely amazing. How did Hollywood ruin it? Because Wolverine's supposed to be a five foot three tiny little dude, and he's six foot four or whatever. There is no official thing that says that Hugh Jackman in that movie is six foot whatever. Yeah, that would mean everybody else is huge or small. Yeah, exactly. That's not how it works. But that's what happened. You're wrong. That's, that's your next one. That's what he was five foot three in all those movies. Negative. 
<coughs> you just misinterpreted. <coughs> the camera angles are off. That's all. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all. Gotcha. All right. Now, this one is going to be controversial. And you know what? I don't know. I don't care because I want to meet him. And if people don't like it, they can go stub their toe. Okay. All 14 of you all <laughs> can go stub your toe if you don't like it. I want to meet Bill Cosby. You know, I, I, I'm down with that. I want to meet him. And I want to talk to him. Not about that crap. Um, I want to talk to him. This dude has been literally an icon, not only for the black community, but for America. Just for families in general. For, the what, Cosby 40 show years? Fantastic. I mean, even his comedy before the Cosby yeah. show, like, the way he, like, was a trailblazer for, I mean... You have people like Jerry Seinfeld who looked up to mm -hmm. Bill Cosby. You know, you have people who were not in the black community who looked at his his comedy and it was just like mind blowing for them. It was it was edgy at the time. I mean, for us, it's kind of pedestrian nowadays. You know, we have nah. Really, every time it's on, I still bust up laughing. No, I'm not saying it's not funny, but it's 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 not it's not for that time. It was edgy. Yeah. But then you had like Eddie Murphy come out, and at that, that time, or even Richard, Pryor. that was ed you see what I'm saying. And so the 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 further we've come along nowadays, we have like Bernie Mac, who like you know every well, no, not, we don't we don't anymore. <laughs> He's gone. Lord rest him. But you know, I mean, but his he had a whole bit on the word MF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, there's no way Bill Cosby would have did that no, back I think, in the... I think remembering listening to his stand-ups, because we got them all on record, and then I converted them to CDs and junk, but maybe four or five cuss words through the, the entire... Right. And they weren't the hard <coughs> cuss words that we no. know now. I mean, the cuss words they used, which was edgy then, were cuss words we literally hear in cartoons now. Right. We right. literally hear in children's right. cartoons nowadays. So just as a society, we're, we're, we're desensitized to that. But I mean, just his, his impact on the culture of America, not just the culture of black America, but literally the culture of America. He painted a black family in a totally different light from the light that was always portrayed. Mm -hmm. uh, a stable family, a stable mother and father raising their children with good values and morals. Um, that's not something we ever saw on TV before. No. Not black folks. Now, we've seen it with other white people, you know, but <clears throat> we had never seen it with black folks. And for him to do that, and then just all the other stuff that he has contributed and added to just our culture. Um, I mean, we'll take a quick diversion <laughs> to uh, the, the issue at hand now. Um, I, I can't say what did happen or what didn't happen in those rooms. But from what I heard of the case, I don't believe the way they say he, the way they're portraying him is accurate. I just yeah. don't believe that. And not because of his shows. And if you just look purely at what the, the information that did come out of the courtroom, I'm like, but he, he handed it to them in their hand. He didn't put it in their drink. He didn't put yeah. it in, he put it in their hand and they <clears throat> willingly took it knowing what, and then my thing is like, like me and you said, like, yeah, if you did it once and that happened, okay, you're a piece of crap. You did it once. The second time, you knew what happened the first time and you did it again. Yeah. Now, when you get up to seven and eight, you we're partying now. It's not like I'm, you know what I mean? It's we're having a party. It's not that I'm doing something to you. It's we're doing this together. But again, like I said, it's controversial. Everybody will have their opinion. Everybody will say, you know, which is perfectly fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Everybody's yeah. entitled to their viewpoint. But as for me... I still like him, and I still would love to meet him. I would love to talk to him, and um, it would be an honor for me. I just want to know if he still likes Jello or not. <laughs> Jello pudding. <laughs> you know he does. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably Everybody getting some right Jell -O. now, actually. I think that's one of the few things they actually give him in those right. kind of situations. <laughs> so he's probably eating Jello on a daily basis, <laughs> un unfortunately. Uh, my number two would probably be Elon Musk. Ah. Because that dude doesn't care yeah he's like i'm gonna play with electric cars but i'm gonna make it fun right i'm gonna play with rockets yeah. and i'm gonna make them do things that they never done before right or my favorite thing is is the boring company yeah. if he needs money for either of those two projects yeah. he's like i need money but i'm not gonna ask you for money but i'm gonna sell you this thing that does things that a flamethrower does <laughs> but it's definitely not a flamethrower because that'd be illegal to sell right <laughs> so no, he is a he is a, he he very much has <coughs> a Tesla like spirit. You know, Absolutely, Nikola Tesla is one of the most amazing people who's ever lived, 
and uh, uh, hands down probably one of the greatest inventors that we know about. Yeah. Um, far beyond, in my opinion, Edison. Um, but just his, the way his mind worked was amazing. And then you have somebody like Elon Musk who takes that name and uh, and, and brands and it. Like re- fully embraces and, it, too. Yeah, and, and does, you know what I mean? That same, like he has that same mentality is, is, is awesome. I yeah. mean, amazing. Because I, I think he's got that, that kind of mentality that he said, I'm going to do this with the Tesla, and everybody said he can't. And he right. said, I'm already doing it. Right. And I think that Tesla would have been doing the same stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, he did the same. He, he made his free energy or whatever, however he did that. Right. People said he couldn't do it. Right. And then and he did it anyway. Right. And so I'm, I, I'm excited for the future of what Elon will bring. Even though he made this goofy uh, Cybertruck thing. Yeah. The premise of it is pretty neat. But see, it's, it's like one of those, I don't know if you, I know you're not really, really familiar with basketball or not. Um, you know the, the ball boys, the, the ball men, they're actually, their last name is Ball. Okay. Uh, Alonzo Ball, and uh, their father. So what they did was they, they did like a big baller brand and uh, they tried to put out their own shoe company, their own, you know, I mean, their own shoes, their own, you know, their own brand for uh, their, their family name. Long story short, they made a, a tennis shoe. And that's, this tennis shoe was supposed to be like the rival for the Michael Jordan tennis shoe, the Jordans. And they were charging like 600 and something dollars for it. And people were like, there's no way anybody's going to buy that. Nobody's going to buy that. It's 600 and something dollars. Nobody's going to pay that kind of money for a regular old tennis shoe. But then people actually did buy it. People were buying it because they were like, well, it's something different, something new. It's something, you know, I'm going to support this company, blah, 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 blah. And whenever I saw the, 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 the Tesla truck that looks like crap, looks like something you would see from like a, you know, 80s movie that's saying this is how the future is going to be. But people are going to buy it. People there's are, already a list. Yeah. Up with you know what I'm saying? It. Like people are, it doesn't matter that it costs too much. It doesn't matter that it's ugly as mud. It doesn't, it's something different. It's something yep. new. They're going to support that company because they like the company. All the same rationale for the six hundred dollars shoes that fell apart on his son's feet on the court. Yeah, <laughs> the, it, when that truck falls apart on the road, people are still going to buy it. Mm-hmm. The same thing with the Hummer. The Hummer was a piece of crap when it came out, but people still are like, "I want a Hummer. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to drive it. I'm going to be proud about it." So people are going to buy it, and yep. and that just speaks to um, good branding. That speaks to you know oh, yeah, having a good like, base. Um, Kanye West garbage. The Yeezy stuff. Yeah. Like you took a rundown, or you took a pair of Adidas shoes and then run it over a grinder and drove it over with a forklift, and then you sell it to people looking like homeless. Yeah. I'm like, and people are gonna buy and it. People bought it off. Yeah. They're and like, you, I'm gonna buy some sweats that look like you slid across 16 <laughs> states. It, I'm like, Without bathing, and they pay a lot. And they do a lot, they, a lot. They pay a whole bunch of money. So, and, I mean, that just speaks to well, for one, it speaks to the. The, I, I guess I can I guess I'll call it the sheep mentality mm-hmm. of people that they're just gonna follow whatever they think is cool or whatever they think is good um, but it also speaks to good branding it also speaks to having a name to having notoriety if if a no-name company had to put that exact same trunk truck out nobody in the world oh, would have ever bought that mm-hmm. truck if the exact same you know shoe would have been produced by any other family, Except for maybe Jordan. If Jordan had to put out six hundred dollars, yeah. people would have still bought it. But you understand what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, uh, it's just, it just speaks to people, I guess. Mm-hmm. But Elon Musk, that's a good one. That's a fantastic person. All right, I think this list at this point is kind of highlighting our implicit bias at this point. Yeah. Because I think everybody on your list is white. And I think everybody on my list is black. <laughs> it really is. I think every single person on my list is black and every single person on your list. And, I, and, and the truth is, is there are plenty of white people that I would love to meet, love to hang out with, love to spend time with. But for my top five, these are just the people that I admire the most mm-hmm. or want to spend the most time with. And I think the, the same is true for you, right? It seems like it, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, I'm pretty sure there are probably, uh, I, I don't think that you wouldn't want to meet Mufasa. No, absolutely. That'd be I think you would heartbeat. love to meet Mufasa, but and he's it, not on your top five. It would be an aw thing, just like meeting George Lucas. I just exactly. just talk to me. Yeah, just tell me a story. Absolutely. And for uh, <coughs> of a truth, I would absolutely love to spend an afternoon with the Top Gear guys, or a, a whole day, or a month, or whatever, to be one of the Top Gear guys. That would be awesome. That would yeah. be so much. Fun. But they're just not on my top five list. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
So I think that just kind of speaks to our our implicit bias. It's not that we dislike the other side. We just like these people more. Yeah. And, I, and That's really what we were raised on. Yeah. Because although I, I was raised, well, I wasn't really raised on Cosby. Right. I watched it when it was on TV, the Cosby show. Right. I, it wasn't until I got married that my wife's family um, knew all of the stand-up. Right. They were raised on his stand up. Right. And so then I learned that side. Right. So that was a totally right. different implicit bias there. Exactly. Because I only knew him from the Cosby show. I didn't even know he was a stand up comedian right. until then. Right. No, nope, I mean, that just, and I think that's the reason I wanted to do these lists. Because just to highlight the difference of our perspective, even though, again, we were raised basically in the same town, basically have very similar experiences from child rearing growing up. But still very, very different, you yeah. know, still very different perspectives on the world and what we think is good or bad or right and wrong and everything. But anyways, uh, number two for me, Sidney Portier. Do you even know who that is? I know who Sydney is. No, you I totally don't. know who Sydney is. Tell me who he is. I can't tell you the movie. Ah! I know exactly who it is. Yeah. I mean, popped up and be like, that's Sydney. Right? No, you wouldn't. Yep. Guess who's coming to dinner? Who? A black man. What? That's the name of the movie. Guess who's coming oh, okay. to dinner? A black man. I mean, I don't know if a black man's on there, but that's what it was implied that <laughs> a black man's coming to dinner. <laughs> but no, uh, Sidney Poitier, man, like, I think he's been, uh, oh man, I think he's been in, well, he was, I think he retired now because he's literally like 90 years yes. old. But he was in movies for like 40 years, 45 mm -hmm. years, something like that. He was in it. Lots of everything. Oh, and, and he was the... Like, I guess you could say almost like he was the trailblazing. Like, there would be no Denzel Washington. There would be no Will Smith. There would be, I mean, he was the guy who was the black guy. I mean, there would be no Eddie Murphy mm -hmm. in movies if there wasn't Sidney Poitier. I mean, I think he was the first black person or the first black man to get nominated for an Oscar. Okay. And, uh... Like, and I think the next one, <laughs> the next one was Denzel Washington. I mean, that's how big of a gap there was, you know? Um, so, I mean, he, and he's just, uh, and then the way he talks, I don't, I can't do it. I can't do it I, justice. I can't even. But like, he has he's like. he's got an accent. He has an accent, <clears throat> but he also is like so smooth. Like, he's like, I want to to tell you. I'm like, oh my God, Sidney <laughs> Poitier, if I was, you know, if I was shaky, I would let you date me. <laughs> no, he's like, the way he talks and the way he is, he's like one of the coolest, smoothest dudes that has ever walked on the earth. And uh, just, I don't know, just to kind of watch that, that, that cool factor, just to kind of be around him. Even though he's like a hundred years old now, I know he's still the coolest guy in the world. So I think I would, uh, I would absolutely love, 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 love to, uh, to meet him. Yeah. I would absolutely love to. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, my number one is he is an entrepreneur. <clears throat> His name is Gary V. He's kind of got this mentality of just do it like Elon does. Yeah. Um, and with that become comes a an air of uh, just do it because. We don't know you. Um, you can judge us all you want, and we're never going to meet you in person. Right. Uh, the internet's wide out there, open for everybody to jump on and play with and and succeed or fail, and it's all upon us to do it. And that's kind of his mantra is just do it, don't care about what people say, and be empathetic towards your fellow man. So that kind of le leads into what we talk about every day, you know. If we just talk to each other with empathy and listen to what people are actually saying, right. um, the world will be a better place, right. period. So right. Gary V, I'd like to really meet and, and say, what's up, man? And, you know, and to that point, like I, I wanted to do a thing at some point, not today. I wanted to do a thing about uh, where, where you and I talk about, you know, because at some point there's going to be a point where we're, we're never going to be like everybody's not going to like us there's going to be a point where somebody on the internet is going to be pissed off about something that yeah, we say absolutely. they're going it, to it, even if we are as middle of the pack as we can be somebody's going to be mad that we're middle of the pack on the subject somebody's going to be mad that we're too conservative on the subject or that we're too liberal on the subject and they're going to give us absolute crap about it and i like 
you know, Gary Vee that he takes that approach like, yeah, whatever. You can yeah, go, he's, you can go he kick basically cross. says, you know, don't take the negativity too hard and don't take the positivity too hard right. too because at one point they could flip flop or your your positivity can disappear and it's not it that shouldn't change your life. Exactly. If if you're passionate about something, be passionate about it because you're passionate about it, not because people are going to like you exactly. for it. Exactly. Or don't do it because you think the people won't. Absolutely. And I think I still think we need to do a, a little segment on that at some point in the future where we where we talk about that philosophy. Absolutely. Like at the end of the day. You're going to think what you want to think regardless of what we think. And we're going to think what we're going to think regardless of what you think. And hopefully you're successful and hopefully we're successful. Mm -hmm. And I, I would hope that you're not trying to tear me down because I'm not trying to tear you down. Yeah, you know? and it's the whole to build the biggest city in t or the biggest building in town. You can either build the biggest building in town or knock all the other smaller buildings down. Correct. Um, Correct. And I'd rather build the biggest building. in Yeah, town. I agree. I agree. And I love that philosophy. I think it's awesome. We'll be we'll, we'll do a whole segment on that. What's show number one? Number one. This is going to be a little controversial for some people. For other people, they'll understand exactly where I'm coming from. So at the end of the day, I'm going to say it. I would like to meet Barack Hussein Obama. Me too. And they yeah I, I uh, he's one of those people that he just he's just like a cool dude man. Despite what you may think about his politics. Despite what you may think about anything about him, where his his origins are, or his birth certificate, any of that other crap that people bring up, he just seems like a real cool dude to be around. Mm -hmm. And I think I would really enjoy just being in his company, talking to him, picking his brain, hanging out with him, laughing with him. You know, I think it would just be, I think it would be a good time. I think it would. Um, and then not not only that, you know, for a good portion of of, of young people in this country. He's a he's a role model. He's an icon. Um, again, despite what you may think about whatever his politics are or weren't or whatever you, you want to believe, he inspired a whole group of young people that would have been otherwise disenfranchised or uninspired if it had not been for him. Mm -hmm. And um, and he he uh, he showed that certain things that we never when I was growing up. We always heard, like, oh, you can be president, but we're like, yeah, bull crap. Has, has there ever been a president that looked anything remotely like me? Yeah, you're just saying that because you want me to get out of your class. Yeah. Not, not because you really genuinely think I can be president. But now when you, you hear that as a young black man or as a young person of any, you know, because uh, technically I guess he's not really black. Well, I guess he is black. He is African-American. But his the dad was African. Literally. His mom was American. He's actually African-American. Um I don't know when you when you hear that when you're a, a dark skinned individual you never believed it until him. It doesn't matter if you're Mexican, Puerto Rican, Chinese, whatever, uh, Chinese American, whatever, whatever it was, you didn't really believe that until you saw him, and then you're like, wait a minute, it actually can be done. Yeah, I have to work hard. I have to go, you know, do three times more than what somebody else would do in order in order to get that position, but it can be done, and I can do it with grace and dignity. Whereas um, before it was always kind of like a uh, a punchline. Even there, there was even movies like The Head of State that came mm -hmm. out and stuff like that, where like being a black president is just a joke. It's like a, a punchline. Like, oh, you're gonna have fried chicken in the White House, and oh, you're gonna have Rottweilers as the the you know <laughs> the government dog or whatever the first dog, and and you know there's just all those those stigmas that come with it. And for somebody to get in that position and absolutely personify what a good president would be or should be. Regardless of what you think about his politics, there was few scandals. There was few, there was like little drama. There was just, he, he held that office with dignity and honor. And I tell you what, I want to meet that guy. Mm -hmm. And I not only meet him, I want to hang out with him. I want to get some connections from him. And <laughs> I want to write a book with him, whatever. I just want to, you know, I want that, you know. And to me, he's, he's a good person. Cool. I think the, uh, I think people think that it's only because He's a, a black guy, um, but if I were, if there were another modern day president, you know, who's still alive, because there's only a few of them that are still alive, that I would also want to hang out with, and like my number two is George W. Bush. 
Oh, like yeah. again, despite his politics, despite what you may think about him, I think he would be so much fun to hang out oh, with. So just walk around uh, the farm. Just, oh like, my That's God. a cow. Cows go moo. <laughs> like something. I think you know. Again, like I said, despite his politics, despite what you think about him, I think he would just be like just so much fun. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, to be on his ranch, just. Dinking around, shooting guns, like he's out there, like drinking beer. Like it would just be hilarious, and I think it would be so much fun to spend time with him. He seems like a, a, a genuine, nice guy. Again, don't agree with everything he did uh, politically, but I don't agree with everything anybody does politically. Yeah. I think that's a foolish stance to take. But um, so I, I, it's not just because he's a a, a, a black person or African American, you know, Barack Obama is, um, but it's. I feel like he really did personify what a good a president would be. And George Bush, I just think he would just be a whole lot of freaking fun yeah. to be around. I think he would, I think I would have a freaking gas with him. But that being said, that's that's our living list. And we're going to chop this sucker right here. You want to see who the dead people we want to hang out with? You have to join us next time. Next time on Implicit Bias. Peace. Roll that beautiful music. Oh, that can be our, our catchphrase. No. Roll that music. Let the music roll on.